Here's a nice story for a Thursday. A young Frenchman who came to this country after the Second World War carried a snapshot with him. It was a photo we first saw here on Today last year, and which led to this morning's entry in Bob Dotson's pursuit of the American dream. Watch this one. Roby Albuie has spent most of his adult life in the mountains of Colorado, but he carries faces from France framed in his mind. The fellows he passed on to freedom during World War II. They were the down crew of an American bomber. He was with the French resistance. They never knew each other's names. The guy was a little bit out of focus who took that picture. Last summer, Albuie came across this yellowing snapshot and we did a story. You saved my life. This is Ray. Hi, Peter. Oh, Good to see you. Yeah. This summer, the crew and their French saviors met for the first time in 39 years. Enchanté. Enchanté. Their odyssey together took just 43 days. 43 days in a lifetime filled with days. Yet there was something so vivid that no marriage, no job, carried the intense colors of those moments on life's edge. Most who fought, fought harder to forget. But in each, there came a time when questions had to be asked and answers given. July 19th, 1944, was to have been their last mission, their 44th mission. They were known as the Hard Luck Crew, but photographer Mike Besick requested this flight because somehow this crew always came home. Over Munich, their big B-24 was riddled with flak. They edged their way through the Alps, looking for Switzerland. It was tail gunner Ted Turback's 23rd birthday. And you're making all kind of promises. <laughs> <laughs> you make all kind of promises coming down. My parachute had opened up in the plane while I was still in the plane. When I saw him, all he had was a handful of white silk in his arms like this, cradled in his arms like that. And it opened itself. I didn't think of letting it out or anything. I didn't have to. Only one man had ever parachuted before. I was almost surprised how easy it was for me to jump out of an airplane. I always wondered if I would. However, it's much easier to jump out when you know where the airplane's going. Bombardier Joe Bonsick settled just 1,200 feet from where the plane crashed. And I said, a Hail Mary, the, the chute open. Okay. And then I was impressed by the uh, tranquility and the quietness as I was descending. They landed halfway between two German garrisons in occupied France. A farmer led Paul Peterson to safety. He picked me up in his arms and he carried me while I regained my, my uh, breath again and we could continue on. Pilot Ken Sorgenfree had smashed his face. Ray Swazinski twisted an ankle, but the rest were unharmed. The Nazis tortured a young French doctor to find their whereabouts. And he refused, and he was tortured to death. The war changed for them when they stepped out of that plane. You see the results of war, and it was devastating. Instead of going to Switzerland, they stayed and helped wounded French soldiers escape. The rescued became rescuers. Mutilated. They were just mutilated. That uh, we decided on. Like, so we uh, were stretcher bearers. We carry them, pee bag, which any way we could to stay ahead. The Americans were guided by a remarkable Frenchman named Noel Monod. He took these pictures when he wasn't ducking bullets. And suddenly I heard. Tings. Thing. Those machine yeah. gun bullets would hit those cliffs and pieces of rock yes. hit the back of my, uh, you know, come oh, down right, from the yeah. backside on me. They hid the seriously wounded behind some boulders and climbed higher. 
the Germans were chasing us up the mountain where we stayed on the, the glacier up on the, in the snow. Monod was stung by the pain his friends below could no longer feel. After the battle, he asked the crew to climb back across a glacier by moonlight to save them. One man they could not bring back. We made a place for him in the rocks, and it was really like digging a grave. Then we lowered him there. We packed a little snow so that he could lick something. He was, his lips were parched, he had a high temperature. And uh, Paul Peterson, who is now minister, <clears throat> we were all around. The moon just came out at that time. It was really quite a, quite a setup. Paul Peterson said a farewell to him. Then uh, he said to me that he wanted to be alone with me for a second. The American went aside, I stayed with him, and I wanted to give him my revolver. And he said, no, keep it. Christ did not believe in suicide. Longer, we may never get up. <laughs> they have all lived long enough now to joke about things that once were breaking their hearts. Because without each other, they may not have grown old at all. Here we are. For today, Bob Dotson, NBC News, Bismarck, North Dakota. Told you it was worth watching. Quick note here, Bob Dotson and his producer Bert Medley are recipients of a Clarion Award for Excellence in Communication in recognition of their American Dream series. Here we only second the motion. <laughs>